Welcome back to the lab. In the last episode, we machined all of the parts we needed for Smog's new drivetrain, and we also cut and welded all of the steel for the frame that would hold it onto the chassis. In this episode, we'll start assembling everything. Now there are over a hundred parts in Smog's new drivetrain, and all of them need to be fitted and adjusted. And that took quite a bit of time. I think the elapsed time on the assembly was about 48, maybe 50 man hours. It was spread out over two weekends, so it was kind of tough to tell exactly how much time I spent doing it. But suffice to say, there were a lot of holes to be drilled and a lot of things to be thought about. A lot of measurements to make. And a glove to be placed on the end of Smog's brakes so I don't hit my head again. One thing I do want to mention about drilling holes in steel. You don't really need very good drill bits as long as they're sharp. And I happen to have a drill doctor for sharpening my small bits and I have a grinder for shaping my large ones. I also have a jack for raising up the chassis so that I can actually get the drill underneath the smog and drill the holes. The hardware I'm using here is just whatever I happen to have up on the bench. This will not be the final set of hardware that will hold everything together. None of these are lock nuts and of course they're all going to vibrate loose as soon as I start the engine. I know that going into it. Here we're installing the first chain. This is coming off of the torque converter which is powered by the engine, and we'll go up and power the first jack shaft. The chain I'm using here is number 40 industrial. It's the same pitch length as what a bicycle chain is, but it's about eight times heavier and holds about 16 times more torque. It comes in 10 foot lengths, and I did have to measure it and use a special chain breaker tool to cut it to the right length. But once that's done, it goes together with a master link. The two pins are affixed to the one side, and that's what I'm placing in here. And then on the near side, there is a fixed plate that slides on, and then a spring clip that holds the entire works together. Now I'm going to start the basic alignment on the first jack shaft, get everything spaced out approximately correct. Once all the parts start running in and find their natural home, I will have to go back and adjust everything again. And you can see that this jack shaft is left purposefully long on the left hand side, and that's not so I can pound on it. That's a provision for a power takeoff in case in the future I want to power something at the speed of this jack shaft we can just throw on another pulley or another sprocket and tap some power off of the engine for some sort of an accessory. This is the final bit of the assembly. We have a tension sprocket over here that's tensioned with a spring. This is borrowed off of the left hand side human powered drivetrain. Since we're not going to need it for a while, we'll just stick it over here. 
and you can see our dog clutch up there. I have not yet made the fork or the linkage for the dog clutch. I'm waiting to finish out the rest of the assembly above all of this mess so that I know exactly how I want to run the linkage. Now let's take a look at the entire assembled system. This is our Predator 212 engine. Behind that is our TAV30 torque converter. This is our automatic transmission and clutch. Power comes out of the engine, up the belt through the system, into a 10 tooth sprocket, up this chain, into a 72 tooth sprocket, across this shaft, into a 10 tooth sprocket, up the chain, past the tensioner, into a second 72 tooth sprocket, onto the shaft. Now this sprocket right here, isn't actually doing anything other than acting as a spacer and a stop. The reason I used it is because I happened to have it in stock and it was convenient. So the power flows out of our 72 tooth, across our shaft, and into the left side of our dog clutch. This is connected to the shaft with the shaft key and it's driven at shaft speed. It goes across and when we are lined up, it will engage Let me rotate this just a bit here. That looks good. Now assuming we have our shift fork in here, the shift fork will be a giant piece of metal that will fit down in the slot that we machined back in the previous episode. And it'll slide back and forth on a linkage, allowing the left side of the dog clutch to engage with the right side of the dog clutch. Keep in mind, Left side is powered by the shaft, and the right side is free to turn at the wheel speed. Right side through to a 14 tooth sprocket here, up the chain to our primary axle. Out the axle and into the giant wheels. When we shift into gear, the linkage will slide the clutch into mesh and will allow the motor to power the main wheels by driving through the clutch. When we're pedaling, we're going to slide this out of mesh and that will allow us to pedal without having to try to turn this entire drivetrain, which creates a tremendous amount of drag. Well, that's about it for the assembly of Smog's drivetrain. Time for the moment of truth. We're going to roll them out to the Colorado test facility and fire up the engine, see how well it works. Today is June the 22nd, and as you can see, it's 62 degrees at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's raining. Still want to move to Colorado? This is typical for June. If it stops raining in the next few minutes, we'll hook up the GoPro and take them out, try to take them for a test drive.
Well, I'd call that a success. The system's still going to need a lot of fine tuning and refinement before it's ready to ride in a parade, but for now, I think it's going to be good enough. Thanks for watching.